Alright, so here's our second video for the defrost time clock. We're basically discussing this timer, if you remember correctly. And we discussed the wiring diagram that came from the factory. Uh, and now I'm going to break it down to you a little more simple uh, you know, on this dry erase board. And so I've kind of laid out the basic terminals here. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, X, and N, along with a power supply down on the bottom here, L1 and L2. These are our legs of power, so wherever the power source is, we're always going to have an L1 and L2, line 1, line 2. So if you remember correctly, we had, a, we had L1 feeding our terminal 1 to our time clock, and then L2 feeding power to terminal N. You'll also remember and I'll show that clock again. There's a jumper between 1 and 2 here. So L1 feeds 1 and then there's a jumper between there. So L1 actually feeds terminals 1 and 2. Okay? Then you got two set of contacts. One set of contacts between 1 and 3 and one between 2 and 4. This set of contacts here are normally closed. So I'll go ahead and close that right now. Okay. So whatever this supplies power to will be running normal when during nor its normal operation, provided it's got a complete circuit. So let's take a look what we can put in here. So let's just say this is for refrigeration piece of equipment, and you you're firing up um, the evaporator fan motor. Okay. So we'll just draw a fan motor picture here to represent our evaporator fan and we'll put four to it there and if we complete that circuit bringing that fan motor back to L2 L2's in on our defrost clock that completes the circuit which means this fan should be running all right the moment this defrost clock turns and gets energized by one of the pins and defrost is initiated our terminal between our contact push between terminals 2 and 4 is going to open and then 1 and 3 contacts will close when that happens our evaporator fan is no longer running because our circuit is open we don't have a complete path anymore fan motors non-operational. Now that contacts between 1 and 3 is closed, whatever it energizes should be running provided there is a complete circuit. So let's say we have some sort of defrost heater. So let's put that in there. We'll bring this down a little bit. We'll put the defrost heater here. And we'll bring that wire from defrost heater to 3. And in order for that to work, we have to complete the circuit. So here's L1 going through our contacts to the heater. And then and that needs to go back to terminal N, which is also L2. So that completes the circuit for the heater. So now we know the heater is actually running. So the heater is running in this case. The fan motor is not. When defrost ends, the contacts will revert back to their original positions. This one will reopen back up and this terminal this terminal contacts will close. Heaters will turn off and the fans will turn on. Okay. Let's look at our X terminal. X terminal is basically designed as a defrost terminator switch. So if you you can use it as an accessory. Remember in video one, we talked about the little dial in the middle of the defrost clock, which was our defrost duration. That was set in minutes. So if it's set for 40 minutes, the defrost will last 40 minutes and then terminate defrost and then the contacts will close and reopen on the other side. But this X terminal can be used for, let's say, uh, you want a thermostat to close when the heaters get to a particular temperature. If you supply power 
to that X terminal and complete a circuit, it's going to cause that defrost clock to revert back to its originally normally open and normally closed positions despite how much time you have left on the clock. So let's say for example we use a the thermostat. Before we do that, let me tell you about the inside behind the scenes wiring of that X terminal. So behind the scenes of the X of the clock here, I'll now put this in dashes, you have a wire coming from terminal 3 to X. So what that means is L1 goes to 3 and then behind the scenes that L1 also feeds X. So now we want to put a thermostat in there. Let's say we put a thermostat here and here and we want it to close on temperature rise. Okay, so when the temperature rises, it'll make that circuit. So we'll put the wire here to here. Here's our thermostat. And then this has to be a complete circuit. So right now we have L1 going to it here, which means it has to complete the circuit by going back to L2. So down here and then back to L2. Okay, here's L2. All right, so what that means is right now, the way our circuit is now, it's in defrost. This contact point is closed. Defrost heaters are energized. Complete the circuit there. This circuit is open. Fans are off. L1 is also being supplied here in the background. Terminal X, which feeds that L1 to the thermostat here. When this thermostat closes, it's going to complete a circuit. Now behind the scenes here, what we don't see in this picture, which I guess we should put it in there, there's a solenoid coil that gets energized. So when that solenoid coil gets energized, it's going to push a rod or a lever in the back of that defrost clock, and it's going to push these contact points back to their original position. And like I said, it doesn't matter if there's still time on the duration of that defrost clock. If this is energized, it's going to kill defrost automatically. It's going to open this back up and then reclose the contacts between two and four. And there again, that's of course if this switch has closed, energizing our, our, uh, our coil in the back of that defrost clock. That's pretty much it. So, you know, instead of the, you can have a thermostat in this cir circuit here instead of a fan, which powers, let's say, a compressor. Um, so there's all kinds of things you can do with this clock. And there are other clocks out there that do a little more um, complex things, but they all pretty much um, get wired up about the same. You just have to know which terminals have normally open and normally closed switches um, so you know how to wire things up. Okay, so hopefully that helps out and I'll try to come up with a new video sometime soon. Um, maybe something that's actually in action. Thanks again, guys. Bye.